Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel to another episode. You're watching Unlimited Options Investing. It's me, Adam, and in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the week that was in stocks and crypto. Most investors and traders are looking at a positive April based on the last 15 of 16 years. Although when you also take a look at the S&P 500 during midterm election years, which is this year, this black line, which includes every year, including midterm election years, we usually on average see a pretty flat May with gains increasing in the summer into the end of the year. Whereas with midterm election years, April is strong, but then once you get to May, statistically it often doesn't look too good. Will this year be different? We'll just have to see. So if this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard and hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, and check out the description below. It'll have links to my Instagram, my TikTok, and my Twitter, and my Instagram starting to get a little bit of traction, so check it out in the description below. All right, and taking a look at the heat map of the S&P 500 for today, Friday, April 1st. Happy April Fool's Day. We're seeing pretty mixed, a lot of red, especially in the semiconductors again for a second day in a row. AMD getting hit down 2.69%. I added to my position yesterday. NVIDIA down 3.47%. Big Tech, Apple is down 1.33%. Microsoft down half a percent. Google up marginally, up almost half a percent. Facebook, similar idea, 0.32%. Amazon, pretty much break even, and the same thing with Tesla. Visa and MasterCard up on the day, and banks, JPM, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo, even Citigroup, all down on the day. Berkshire down 1%. Defensives looking pretty all right on the day, except for maybe railroads, all down pretty significantly, an average of about 5-6%. Even UPS and FedEx down about 5%. Ford and GM down, and real estate having a green day. When we zoom out and take a look at the last week's performance. So again, big tech pretty sideways on the week. Apple 0.31%, Microsoft 1.38. Adobe having a good week. Nvidia down 3%, AMD down 10%, Google down 1.18, Facebook up 1.27, Amazon pretty break even, and Tesla up 6.28%. Banks, semiconductors, home improvement, all red on the week, with defensive showing a lot more strength than risk on. Taking a look at crypto, it looks like it's been holding on. We had a breakout last week and things were getting excited. We were looking for a potential pullback, which we have been getting and seeing this $46,000 mark being able to hold, which so far it has been. Bitcoin still holding up about 5% over the past week. Ethereum 11.1% over the past week. Solana having a monster week of 38%. XRP break even. Cardano up 7.75%. And Cardano up 7.75% with a lot of altcoins doing a lot of crazy things. Terra, which I don't really follow, up 20%. Avalanche, 17.5%, and so on. And when we take a look at the candlesticks, things are trading as we were probably expecting them to look like. We found that overhead resistance where we were expecting it, around 370, where we found previous resistance back in February. As well, a key area from back in 2021 where we had some consolidation. So now we're pulling back on the NASDAQ, where are we expecting to find buying pressure? Of course, where the moving averages look like they're about to cross over around the 350, 355 area. So what we'd be looking for is something similar to what would look like this. At least we would be expecting some buying pressure in this area. It doesn't necessarily need to go right back up and test the resistance again. It can do something like this and consolidate for a while for all we know. Now, assuming the buyers do step up around 350, 355, the bear case scenario is that we get some kind of bull trap and then make a lightning bolt and then eventually breach that 350 area and then continue making new lows. But for now, we are in bullish context. So what I ended up doing this week was around this area over here. After we had gapped up, I'm like, you know what? Listen, we are at a key resistance point. We can continue for sure going up and up and up, although that isn't ideal, that doesn't make for a healthy market. But at that point, I started selling calls against my positions, giving myself some breathing room to maybe this area over here, around the $380 mark on the QQQ. Because just in case we did smash through this resistance, then the next area would have been over here around 380. And after such a strong couple of weeks and being so far away from the moving averages, again, Price action is like a rubber band. The higher and more violent they go up and the faster they do, the more likely the opposite is going to happen. Meaning on the downside, it's also going to be fast and violent. Now, of course, no one wants that. You want one step back and two steps up. And looking at the S&P 500, the SPY, similar idea. We actually breached the previous area of resistance around 456, 457. We did go a little bit higher, but same idea. We gapped up earlier this week. 
the sellers finally stepped up and we're going to look for something very similar like the Nasdaq. Taking a look at Bitcoin, so we're sitting on that key support line that was previous resistance around 46,000. We had touches back in March and in February, as well as a strong support back in 2021. And although today we did breach that level, we gained it right back and that's okay. We touched that 20 EMA, which is the red line, found strength and the buyer stepped up. So similar to what we want to see on the indices, we want to see again a pullback and a move higher. And similar idea with Ethereum, we're seeing even more strength of 5% on the day. Again, we did fall below that 3400 mark for a little bit, but that's okay because we found strength. We didn't quite touch the moving averages, but again, we don't necessarily need to. And looking at the ratio of Ethereum and Bitcoin, it looks like Ethereum is finally looking like it's starting to break out. Ethereum being the one coin I'm really excited about to move aggressively. And in other use, the 10 year and the two year have officially inverted. They did for the other day for just a few seconds and we weren't sure if that was going to be it. But with the trajectory of how things have been going with the two year just going straight up and to the right, they have now officially, officially inverted. So yes, context is everything, but that I ask is a recession coming in the next 12 to 18 months. Based on the leading indication, the two year is now yielding more than the 10 year. I guess we're just going to have to find out in the next couple of years. But again, context being everything that it is. We have never had a mix of variables in the way we do now with all the money printing that we've seen over the last few years, inflation being what it is, all the geopolitical tensions, supply constraints, companies making record profits. It's really anyone's guess how this is all going to play out. All right, and lastly, taking a look at the VIX. So for most of the year until the FOMC meeting, we were swelling up and it was a roller coaster ride until the recent peak around 36. And since then, it's been a nice move down as markets have been recovering. But when we went below 20, we had an indecision candle and now a little bit more fears entering the markets. But again, it makes sense as we were at critical resistance points on the S&P and the NASDAQ. So does this become a thing where we hit the moving averages around 24, 25, 26 and then continue moving down? Or do we find resistance near where we are now around 21, 22 and then continue moving below 20? Let me know in the comments below what are your thoughts for the upcoming month of April? Are we going to have a strong rally as we have statistically over the last 15 years? Is fear going to creep back into this market? Let me know in the comments below. As always, like, subscribe, check out my Twitter, my Instagram, and my TikTok, and I will see you guys in tomorrow's video.